we have a long list of the clinical diseases which are presented in this broad category. Now, I'll only with this chief complaint, can you tell me what are the important points which can help you about the diagnosis? So, hello everyone. Uh, today we have with us uh, Chirag Bansal who will be presenting to us a case of papillosquamous disorder. I want Chirag uh, to please introduce yourself and uh, start with the today's case discussion. Hello everyone, I am Chirag Bansal and today I will be presenting a case of psoriasis which is a papillosquamous disorder. Uh, my patient Chandran, 55 years old male from Dwarka, Delhi, shopkeeper by occupation, belonging to middle class by socio-economic status. The informant is patient himself. The patient presented with the chief complaints of redness and scaling all over the body for the past 20 days. Patient was apparently well 20 days ago when patient presented with a well-defined arithmetic papules and plaques with thick silvery white scales on their surface. Patient gives history of increase in scales on scratching the lesion but there is no history of any joint pain, fever or chills. Okay. So Chirag, you are telling me that you are having a patient with some scaly disease. So can you tell me which broad category you will be classifying this patient into? The one which has presence of, yeah. Papulosquamous disorders. Very nice. So whenever a patient presents with papules or plaques with surmounted scales over it, we will be classifying these group of disorders into papulosquamous disorder. It has a lot of example in them. For example, the eczemas can be also broadly classified under this broad category of papillosquamous disorder. We have some diseases like pityriasis rosea, pityriasis versicolis, pityriasis lichenoides chronica, parasoriasis, squamous cell carcinoma. We have a long list of the clinical diseases which are presented in this broad category. Now, I'll only with this chief complaint, can you tell me what are the important points which can help you about the diagnosis? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, because a patient is having uh, thick silvery white scales and uh, they are increasing on scratching. So, it is suggestive that uh, there is uh, positive Cobner's phenomena and also uh, because these uh, thick uh, silvery white scales with well-defined erythematous papules are seen on extensor surface. So, we may think of psoriasis uh, because it has this uh, type of presentation. Very nice. So one thing which we can note in this patient is that involvement of the extensors with lesions which is red in color and they have a thick white or silver color scale. Now can you tell me uh, why you have asked the history of joint pain in this particular patient? Any particular significance or the reason of asking joint pain? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, psoriasis can uh, uh, turn into a complication which is called as psoriatic arthritis uh, later on its course. So, uh, to rule out that, we have asked about the history of joint pain. Very nice. So, because of associated psoriatic arthritis, we have asked the history of joint pain. I will be telling you later on what are the important features which you have to look for in a patient of psoriatic arthritis. So, I want you to go ahead, uh, tell me more about this patient. Uh, moving on to past history, there is no history of any such uh, similar illness in the past, there is no history of any surgeries in the past and there is no history of any pulmonary tuberculosis, diabetes, mellitus or hypertension in the past. So Chirag, do you have any significance of uh, the systemic uh, features here like involvement of the uh, you know heart, presence of blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension, any significance in this particular patient? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, if uh, there is diabetes mellitus hypertension in a patient uh, of psoriasis, then it is suggestive of metabolic syndrome and uh, psoriasis has a significant association with metabolic syndrome. So, uh, to rule out any such condition, uh, we have asked this history. Very nice. So, what happens like uh, in majority of psoriasis patient, they can finally end up into cardiovascular accidents. The reason behind this is strong association with metabolic syndrome. They have high waist to hip ratio or obesity. They have increased risk of diabetes mellitus, 
hyperlipidemias, hypercholesterolemias, and finally they land up with some cardiac accidents, which can even uh, become a cause of death in these individuals. So we always need to make a note of the associated comorbid condition, which are usually seen in these individuals. What what is the next history you have with you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there is uh, no history uh, history of use of anti-malarial drug in the last month is uh, there, but there is no history of any allergy to any drugs. Any particular significance where you have taken a drug history in this patient? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, psoriasis can sometimes be induced by some drugs also, like uh, it can be anti-malarial drugs also, it can be anti-psychotic drugs, anti-epileptic drugs and uh, uh, other drugs also can uh, sometimes land the patient uh, to psoriasis, which is a chronic inflammatory disorder. Very nice. So uh, we know a lot of drugs which are actually implicated in either causing a new lesion or aggravating the existing psoriatic lesions. Now, what are the drugs? We have a very easy way to remember this and the mnemonic to remember the drug causing psoriasis is PLEP. So P stands for painkiller, which includes NSAIDs. L stands for lithium. A stands for anti-malarials and ACE inhibitor. And B stands for beta blocker. So whenever you get a patient where you are suspecting it to be a case of psoriasis, always check for any drug history. Whether in past few days patient have taken any of these drugs, always try to look for it. Very nice. Next. There is a history of similar complaints in the maternal family where patient visited a few days ago uh, but the patient has no history of interaction with the pets and there is no history of previous interaction in kids or uh, patient's wife. Okay, so we could see that there is a positive family history and in fact uh, I will be telling you after some time that whenever we read about psoriatic arthritis, one of the diagnostic criteria it includes a positive family history. So if you are having a positive family history of similar complaints, either the cutaneous lesions of psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis, then please make a note because these individuals have a higher risk of having severe complicated psoriasis. And in this particular patient, we are actually finding a positive family history. Yes, ma'am. Now moving ahead to negative history. Uh, history of any infection prior to onset of uh, initial illness was absent. Because that is there was no sore throat, no dental or no uh, gastrointestinal infection. There was no history of trauma at the site followed by development of the lesion. There was no history of any joint pain and also the patient didn't complain of any chest pain, palpitation or breathlessness or rapid gain in weight. And also there is no history of spread of the lesion to entire body with or without pus filled lesions. Okay. So, Chirag, you have given me a lot of uh, negative history. I want to ask one by one, starting with the first, any history of past infection. Can you tell me, is the past infection make a difference? Or do you have any significance of infectious condition and precipitation of psoriasis? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there is an association called as gutted psoriasis, which occurs after upper respiratory tract infection, usually in children. So if uh, there is any history of upper respiratory tract infection followed by appearance of the silvery white lesions over extensors, then we can think in terms of gutted psoriasis. Very nice. So there is one variant of psoriasis which is known as gutted psoriasis. It mainly present in children. Clinically, you see small coin shaped gutted lesions or raindrop like lesions which are mainly located on the trunk followed by extremities. Now, this type of gutted psoriasis, it is usually preceded by an infective focus, which could be either in the ear, with ear infection, middle ear infection, or it could be in the uh, throat, like pharyngitis, tonsillitis, or you can even get GI infections. Whenever the patient have these focus, the streptococcus, beta hemolytic streptococcus, it can cause precipitation of gutted psoriasis. And please remember, if it is a gutted psoriasis, you always need to treat it by giving antibodies or antibiotics. Antibiotics will take care of the infective focus and this antibiotics will actually improve the gutted psoriasis. Unlike other psoriasis where you need to give immunosuppressant, in gutted psoriasis, simply giving antibiotics will take care of it. Few more points that in gutted psoriasis, there is a higher risk of recurrence. Whenever a patient develops 
infection again there is a higher risk that he can go for the similar condition again so try to look for this type of history in a patient of psoriasis moving to the second that a history of trauma at the site can you tell me why we are taking a history of trauma in this patient uh, yes ma'am uh, there is a phenomena called as cobner's phenomena in which uh, there are trauma induced lesions uh, that is when trauma occurs on a, a normal looking skin the lesion develop there later on so uh, we are uh, taking this history to rule out uh, if the uh, if it is positive or not very nice so there is a very known phenomena which is known as cobner's phenomena or isomorphic phenomena which is seen in a patient of psoriasis lichen planus vitiligo what happen in these phenomena whenever you have trauma to the skin at the site of trauma you tend to develop these lesions like for example if a patient is a known case of psoriasis or known case of lichen planus he tend to develop those lesions at those sites so try to always look for the presence of these lesions secondary to trauma moving to the next any history of joint complaint so we have already discussed that presence of joint complaint will actually give you a associated psoriatic arthritis information what about the next factor presence of chest pain palpitation what is the significance of that ma'am uh, it again uh, suggests uh, if either there is presence of uh, any complications of metabolic syndrome like cardiovascular very complications nice. very nice so if you have an associated uh, cardiovascular accidents or metabolic syndrome for example like breathlessness rapid gain in the weight all these features are actually pointing towards an associated metabolic syndrome and what about the last feature what about the last feature uh, ma'am it is usually seen when we are treating the patient of psoriasis uh, if we treat the patient of psoriasis with the steroids which are usually contraindicated in uh, psoriasis then on tapering steroids the patient may develop uh, another severe kind of psoriasis called as pustular psoriasis or atherodermic psoriasis so in that there is spread of lesion to entire body with or without pus filled lesions so to rule out uh, that condition we have taken this history very nice so we have a variant of psoriasis which is known as erythrodermic or pustular psoriasis so what happen uh, whenever a patient like you all know that there are many many conditions or there are many situations where patient do not receive a proper treatment instead of going to a doctor he they just go to a uh, you know a quack or you know some some local doctors and they mistreat psoriasis by starting him on steroids now whenever patient takes steroids during therapy nothing happens but the problem start when the patient stops the steroid or withdraw the steroid okay. suddenly what happened the well defined nature of the lesions are lost and they tend to become more and more diffuse they more and more ill defined and they tend to involve the whole body that is a very very classical uh, version of a uh, erythrodermic or pustular psoriasis so these two type of psoriasis that is erythrodermic and pustular psoriasis they need to be ruled out because the treatment is different and the clinical presentation are very different compared to psoriasis vulgaris uh, personal history uh, patient is currently married and has two children patient is also alcoholic and smokes 8 to 10 cigarettes per day and also uh, but there is no history of diabetes mellitus or any other chronic disease in patient okay so now we have two very important histories that is one of smoking and another of alcohol so can you tell me chirag uh, is there any significance of alcohol history or smoking history uh, if we are considering this as a case of psoriasis uh, yes ma'am uh, smoking uh, also aggravates the lesions of psoriasis and also it can uh, cause the formation of new lesions as well alcohol is also uh, associated with increased tendency of formation of psoriatic lesions and also uh, it is particularly associated with the lesions of psoriasis on face so these are two important associations of uh, smoking and alcohol okay very nice so please remember smoking and alcohol can even precipitate psoriasis so you always have to take a history whether a patient is a known case of uh, you know like known smoker or if he consume the alcohol regularly another very important uh, feature for this history is we have to start the patient on some of the drugs like methotrexate and methotrexate itself it causes uh, you know liver function derangement so if there is any existing liver derangement you always need to rule out them and then only you can start these patients on the drugs like methotrexate 
So direct connection with the disease as well as for treatment part also. So you have to check for both these features and uh, if there is no such association, you can easily go ahead and start the patient on the therapy. Moving to the next history. Patient is non-vegetarian, his appetite is good and his bowel and bladder habits are regular but his sleep is disturbed. Very nice. Moving on to examination. Uh, first general physical examination. Patient is well oriented to time, place and person. He is thin by build and his height is 172 centimeters. Weight is 59 kgs. His body mass index is 19.9 kg per meter square. Okay. So here again, uh, the, the general physical examination becomes important because a very obese patient or a patient with a very stout built who is not very active, they are more prone for development of metabolic syndrome. So whenever you have a patient of psoriasis, always try to look for these comorbid conditions which can ultimately land the patient to the cardiovascular diseases or ultimately to accidents. So this general physical makeup of the patient becomes very important here. Uh, vitals, uh, pulse is 82 per minute, uh, blood pressure 124 by 76 mm of mercury, respiratory rate 14 per minute, temperature is 36.2 degrees Celsius and jugular venous pressure is not distended. Uh, pickle, there is no pallor, ictrus, clubbing, cyanosis or edema. Moving on to systemic examination, first cardiovascular system, S1 and S2, uh, both heart sounds are heard normally. There is no added murmur. Uh, on center nervous system examination, there is no focal neurological deficit seen. No pathology is seen in cranial lungs also. And on respiratory system examination, bilateral air entry was present normally. And also there was normal breathing sounds present. On musculoskeletal system examination, there was nothing significant. Can you tell me, Chirag, why they are doing musculoskeletal examination here? We usually do not do it for all the dermatological cases, but here we are specifically doing musculoskeletal examination. Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, because uh, as I already discussed, the psoriasis can uh, turn into a complication called as psoriatic arthritis, uh, which is usually uh, asymmetrical oligoarthritis. So, to rule out that condition, uh, we are doing musculoskeletal system examination to see if there is any joint involvement. Very nice. So why are we doing a musculoskeletal examination? Because we have seen that around 5 to 10 percent of psoriatic patient ultimately go into developing psoriatic arthritis. Now psoriatic arthritis is a very disability type of uh, arthritis. We have different variants. The most common one is asymmetrical oligoarthritis. We have others like very similar to rheumatic arthritis which is symmetrical polyarthritis. We can get a single joint involvement where only the distal interphalangeal joint gets involved. We can have involvement of the axial uh, uh, bones uh, where you can have involvement of the vertebral joint or we can have a mutilating variety which is known as artillating mutilates. Now we always see that the joint involvement in few individuals start after a long time a patient has skin lesion. And in few of them, it begins at the same time. So you always have to look for musculoskeletal examination. Try to look for the small joints which are more commonly involved, followed by the uh, strong joint or a large joint. In, in psoriasis, the distal interphalangeal joint becomes very, very important. Although in this particular patient, the joint disease is not seen. In history also, there was no complaint of the joint. Plus, on doing this musculoskeletal uh, examination also, we could not find any particular relevant history. Moving on to dermatological examination, patient was examined in standing as well as in lying down position with adequate privacy and there on examination there were well defined erythematous indurated plaques surrounded by large loose lamellar silvery scaly lesions. Greta's test is positive and auspice sign is also seen. Berkeley's membrane is also observed on examination. Okay, so here we have a lot of features which is given. First of all, we have a papule or a plaque. So we have discussed initially that we have a patient with papulosquamous disorder. In this particular patient, you are saying that you have erythematous papules and plaque and you have thick silvery scales. Now there's a very, very important feature. The reason for thick silvery scales, what happens in a patient of psoriasis, you have increased epidermal turnover. The normal epidermal turnover time is 56 to 76 days. 
But in psoriasis, the autoimmune T lymphocyte, what they do? They cause epidermal proliferation. It becomes very fast. So instead of taking 56 to 72 days, now epidermis take only 4 days to go from the stratum basal to stratum corneum. So you have rapid accumulation of different layers of stratum corneum. And these different layers of stratum corneum will finally end up forming the scales. Now, can you tell me, you have told me that we will do a test which is known as Garates test or auspice test. Can you tell me how to perform this auspice test? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, when we remove the scales, if we see pinpoint bleeding points, then it shows auspice sign is positive. And for Garates test, if we try to remove the scales, then they come out in a single go like a candle wax, which is called a uh, Gretel sign positive. Okay. So actually both of them are component of a single test, which is known as auspit test. So what happens in auspit test, we have three steps. Step one, which is known as the garage test. We have step two, which is where you remove the thick scales. So auspit sign is actually a three step procedure. In step one, we are actually taking a glass slide and we are rubbing the scaly plaque and this step is known as garage. What happens when you take a glass slide and when you rub it, the scales becomes more prominent and when you try to remove it, they will remove in one go. This is known as candle grease or candle wax sign, which is the step one of auspit sign. In step two, we are removing the scale and we are seeing a thin glistening membrane, which is known as Berkeley's membrane. And in step 3, we are actually removing this Berkeley's membrane and we are looking for the pinpoint bleeding areas. Now, what is the significance? Why you are seeing the pinpoint bleeding areas? Please remember, it is because of suprapapillary thinning. The pinpoint bleeding areas occur because of suprapapillary thinning, which is very, very frequently seen in the patient of psoriasis. Now, can you tell me, Chirag, any variant of psoriasis where auspit sign or geratage sign is negative? Uh, Ma'am, negative in drug-induced psoriasis. Okay, so uh, please remember the gut it, uh, uh, it is negative in all those variants of psoriasis where there is no scales. So where you have no scales, you have no scales in the psoriasis which occurs in the flexures like inverse psoriasis. In psoriasis where you have erythroderma or pustular psoriasis. In psoriasis like where you have gut tight lesions, gut tight psoriasis. So please remember Chirag, wherever you have absence of scales, you tend to have negative auspice sign. Because the first step of doing an auspice sign is, you have to scratch the scaly lesions. And if there is no scale, you cannot remove the scales. And that is why you cannot perform an auspice sign. So try to remember a very, very important feature that for doing a auspit sign, the prerequisite is presence of scales. And if there is no scales, you can straight away go and say that the auspit sign is negative. Now, I want to discuss a few variants. One, which is gutted psoriasis, we have already discussed that it occurs secondary to infection. We have some other variants and one of them is inverse psoriasis. Please remember, psoriasis occurs over the extensors like elbow, knee, scalp, palm and soul. There is a variant of psoriasis which is known as inverse psoriasis or flexural psoriasis which occurs only over the flexures like axilla, groin, etc. And in this patient, because of moisture, in inverse psoriasis, because of moisture, there will be no scale and that is why the gutted sign or the, uh, the, uh, the auspice sign or the gerated sign becomes negative. Moving to the next examination. On nail examination, nail plate is thickened and there is accumulation of solid keratinous material under the nail plate and nail plate become yellow and dystrophic. Okay, so uh, can you tell me, uh, Chirag, will you see nail changes in all the patients of psoriasis? No ma'am, uh, nail changes are not seen in all patients of psoriasis. They are usually seen in 10 to 50% cases of psoriasis. Very nice. So sometimes, uh, you know, they, they even ask this question in your exam that how many percent of patient shows nail psoriasis? Please remember it is not seen in 100% of the patient. It is seen in 10 to 50% of the patient. Now, what is the reason of having nail psoriasis? It is because of parakeratosis of the nail matrix. 
Now nail matrix is the part which is present just below the proximal nail fold and it is responsible for formation of the nail plate. So whenever you have any damage to the nail matrix, you tend to develop changes in the nail plate which presents with the lot of features. One of them is given here. Can you tell me Chirag, which is the most common nail finding in a patient of psoriasis? Uh, yes ma'am, uh, that is pitting of nail plate. Very nice. So nail pitting is the most common type of nail uh, change in psoriasis. And what happens in nail pitting? You develop deep irregular pit which is known as thimble pit. It is because of defect in the nail matrix. Other signs which you see because of nail matrix defect are you see whitish discoloration of nail plate which is known as leukotrichia and you can sometimes also get nail plate crumbling. Jira, can you tell me which is the most specific nail feature of nail psoriasis? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it is irregular and superficial pits. This is the most common, which is the most specific. The, the nail bed, oil drop sign, it becomes the most specific sign of nail psoriasis. Yes. So, oil drop sign is the most specific and the nail pitting becomes the most common changes which is seen in the nail psoriasis. Moving to the next part. <coughs> Uh, yes ma'am, uh, separation of distal nail plate from nail bed could be seen and also on examination there was yellow red discoloration in the center of nails and deep irregular pits were also observed on some of the nails. So very nice, the first point which I have told the separation of distal nail plate from the nail bed, this is known as onycholysis. So you have separation of the nail plate from the nail bed. The yellowish red discoloration in the center of the nail, this is actually an oil drop sign which is the most specific one and the last is deep irregular pit. This is the most common feature of nail psoriasis. So can you tell me more features uh, on examination? Any uh, joint complaint uh, have you seen in this patient? Uh, um, no ma'am, in this case uh, the joint problem was not there and also uh, okay. the main feature was uh, silvery white scales seen on extensor surfaces. Okay, so just tell me a probable diagnosis. What provisional diagnosis you will make? Just brief summary and a provisional diagnosis with differential diagnosis for this patient. Okay, ma'am. Uh, based on the uh, points in history and clinical examination, uh, the I can summarize my case that 55 years old male presenting with uh, redness scaly lesions like silvery white scales present over extensor surfaces associated with itching all over the body is most likely a case of psoriasis and uh, the differential diagnosis can be seboric dermatitis, uh, Ritter's disease or some kind of eczema. Okay, fine. Very nice. So here there are many points which have favored the diagnosis of psoriasis like the presence of well-defined erythematous to violaceous or erythematous to red color salmon colored papulan plaque with thick silvery scales over it. Along with that we have also done auspit sign which tells you that you are having a patient with thick scales and suprapapillary thinning. Now in these individuals we have a lot of features like presence of a warren of ring which is the hypopigmented margin surrounding the plaque. It occurs because of decrease in the prostaglandin E2 levels. There are other features like a very common sight that is the extensors, elbow, knee, back, gluteal cleft, scalp. So these are some of the factors which favors the diagnosis of psoriasis. What are the factors or features against the diagnosis of seboric dermatitis? One is you have yellowish greasy plaque or yellowish greasy scales in seboric dermatitis which is not the case here. The features which are against the Reiter syndrome is that there is no joint involvement and the features against secondary syphilis and pityriasis dosia is there is no infectious feature which is present in this particular patient. Now my another question to you is Chirag, if you do a biopsy, can you tell me what all changes you will see? Uh, yes ma'am, uh, on doing biopsy in case of psoriasis, we will see suprapapillary thinning, we will see irregular reteriges and also we will see Munro's microapsis and Kogoj pustules uh, and parakeratosis okay. which is retention of nucleus in the uh, stratum corneum. Okay, very nice. So, whenever you do a biopsy which is a very very diagnostic in psoriasis, 
we'll see a lot of changes now as we have discussed in the beginning of the today's session only that psoriasis is a autoimmune t lymphocyte mediated disorder what happens in psoriasis we have a t lymphocyte which is th1 or th17 it will go and stimulate the stratum basale so what happens normally stratum basale cells takes around 300 hours to divide and it takes around 56 to 72 days to reach up to the stratum corneum and to shed but because of activation of th1 and th17 what happens because of activation there is change and there is decrease in the time from 56 to 72 days to 4 hours or 4 days which is very very less. So okay. now only in 4 days the cell will reach up to the upper layer and because of this you have a lot of accumulation of the different layers of the cell. Now another very important point which I wanted to discuss here is because of this thick accumulation the stratum corneum will not get enough time it will not get enough time to shed. And because of this, you will see hyperkeratosis and parakeratosis of the stratum corneum. Second feature is stratum granulosum. You will see a granulosis of stratum granulosum. In stratum spinosum, you can see increase in the thickness, which is known as acanthosis. While in the stratum basal, it will be absolutely normal. For retail ridges, you will see that there is thick thickening or increase in the retail ridges. You will have increase of the retail ridges in the form of papillomatosis or you can have proliferation of the retail ridges in the form of camel foot appearance. Now can you tell me if you have to treat this patient, what will be your basic investigation which can be done? Yes ma'am, uh, for treating this patient, the basic investigations will include CBC, TLC, DLC, count, LFT, RFT and also a chest x-ray because most of the drugs used in uh, psoriasis are immunosuppressive drugs so we have to see whether the patient has normal uh, blood counts also and also uh, he is already not immunosuppressed we have to rule out other conditions like associated with immunosuppression like diabetes uh, and also HIV. Very nice. So if we talk about treatment please remember first of all if you have to start a patient on therapy you have to go for some basic investigation. First of all, as we have already discussed that psoriasis is associated with a lot of metabolic conditions like obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes. So you always need to go for a baseline investigation. Second, there are a lot of drugs, for example, methotrexate. There are many biologics which you have to start in these individuals. And that is why you always need to go for a routine checkup like chest x-ray to rule out tuberculosis or any other active focus of infection. You even need to go for some of the tests like ECG, electrolytes to look for the general normality in these individuals. So for this patient also you will go for a basic investigation. Now can you tell me what will be your treatment option of first choice for this particular patient like there is no uh, joint involvement in this patient. So what will be your preferred drug here? Uh, Ma'am, methotrexate. Very nice. In this particular patient you will start him on methotrexate. Can you tell me what is the mechanism of action of methotrexate, Chirag? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, methotrexate uh, inhibits dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. Very nice. So it inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme and in turn it causes reduction in the T lymphocyte mediated damage. Now, how do you give methotrexate? Will you give daily therapy of methotrexate or you have some different way of giving methotrexate? Uh, Ma'am, usually it is given in weekly doses. Very nice. You give methotrexate in a weekly dose. Either you can give 7.5 mg or 10 mg or 15 mg per week. This is done because if you give it regularly, you can develop methotrexate toxicity. And to prevent it, we have to add folic acid every day whenever you start a patient on methotrexate. Now, we all know that there are many, many conditions which is associated with psoriasis. For example, there are very frequent association of HIV or we can even see aggravation of psoriasis in a HIV patient. So can you tell me, Chirag, is there any different treatment option whenever you have a patient of HIV developing psoriasis? Uh, yes, ma'am, because uh, the patient of HIV is already immunosuppressed, so we will uh, better prefer acetretin uh, rather than going for methotrexate. Very nice, very nice. 
So whenever a patient is an already immunocompromised patient, you will never start the patient on immunosuppressive like methotrexate, cyclosporin, etc. You have to give a different group of drug and that is oral retinoids. Please remember, in patients with HIV, you have to give acetretin which is an oral retinoid. This is even preferred in the patient with pustular form of psoriasis. Now what is pustular psoriasis we have discussed few minutes back that sometimes the patient is ill treated by oral steroids. When you withdraw the oral steroids you sometimes develop pustular lesion and that is known as pustular psoriasis. In pustular psoriatic cases there is no role of methotrexate or any other biologic. The best treatment modality available is acetretin which is an oral retinoid. Can you tell me what is the most common side effect or what precautions we need to take whenever we start a patient on, uh, on acetretin? Um, Ma'am, uh, the most common side effect with acetretin is usually dryness and other uh, uh, side effects it can also be associated with teratogenicity. So uh, before starting the Very drug in a female patient, we should have to rule out uh, whether she is pregnant. And uh, the precautionary measure is like uh, for three years, the patient is uh, uh, contraindicated for pregnancy. Very nice. So if we are, first of all, we have to avoid giving acetretin in a reproductive age female. But if by any chance we have to give it, we have to ask the patient to have a strict contraception for a period of three years after stopping the drug. Because it is considered as a fat soluble drug which remains inside our circulation or remain inside our body for three years. So it is always advised uh, for a female patient to take a strict contraception for at least three years after stopping the drug. Very nice. Now suppose Chirag, if this individual is like here we are not having any joint complaint. But if this patient has, suppose if this patient is also having psoriatic arthritis, can you tell me which is the most common variant of psoriatic arthritis? What type of psoriatic arthritis you can see in this patient? Uh, most common involvement of the joint. Ma'am, most common joint involved is distal interphalangeal joint and most common variant is asymmetrical oligoarthritis type of variant. Very nice. Very nice. So we have different type of presentations, but the most frequent is asymmetrical oligoarthritis where the rheumatoid factor is negative because we have to differentiate it from rheumatoid uh, arthritis. So the rheumatic factor is negative. You have asymmetrical oligoarthritis while in rheumatic fever it is symmetrical polyarthritis. And third is you have cutaneous features of psoriasis which is present. The distal interphalangeal joint is very frequent in this patient compared to the rheumatoid arthritis where the proximal interphalangeal joint becomes more important. Now, if this is a case of psoriatic arthritis, the treatment of choice becomes methotrexate because that works very well in a patient of psoriatic arthritis. Now, suppose uh, Chirag, if we are not able to give any uh, oral drug like methotrexate acetretin, do you know any biologic which is tried uh, in a patient of psoriasis and it has worked well? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, certain biological agents like uh, 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 ustekinumab, secukinumab, uh, these are tried well, uh, which are Very against nice. interleukins. Very nice. So, we have a lot of uh, biologics which is tried uh, in a patient of psoriasis. Now, one of the very frequent uh, biologic which we use is secukinumab. Now, when I told you about the pathogenesis, I have told you that in a patient of psoriasis, what is the main complaint? You have increased TH1 and TH17 cell response. In TH1 and in TH17 cell response, what happens? You have increase in interleukin 17, interleukin 22 and interleukin 23. All these features or all these interleukins are mainly controlled by secukunimab which works against IL-17. We also have another biologic which is brodalumab which works against the IL-17 receptor. Then we have a lot of TNF-alpha biologics which is etanercept, infeximab, etc. So these biological drugs can be tried in a patient where the conventional therapy of methotrexate and acetretin is not working. Now these are some of the treatment modalities you can use. I just want to add a little bit about the different variants of psoriasis. Now if a patient of a pregnancy develops psoriasis, psoriasis is usually very extensive in those patients. You can develop erythrodermic variety, you can even develop pustular variety. Chira, can you tell me, is there any change in the treatment of a pregnant patient with a severe form of psoriasis? 
uh, yes ma'am uh, usually steroids are contraindicated in psoriasis but in pregnant patient because most of other uh, immunosuppressive agents are either uh, having lot of side effects like teratogenicity or they are not effective so we uh, give steroids as a treatment in pregnancy uh, but uh, after the delivery uh, the steroids are replaced by other immunosuppressive agents so uh, pregnancy is one yeah. condition where steroids are given very nice so please remember in psoriasis oral steroids are completely contraindicated except during pregnancy and that type of psoriasis which is seen in the pregnancy is known as impetigo herpetiformis the severe erythrodermic form or the pustular generalized pustular psoriasis of pregnancy should always be treated by giving oral steroids because here we have to look for the risk benefit ratio we want something which works very fast now there's one more condition sometimes what happens you have diabetes in the pregnant patient and when you have gestational diabetes steroid becomes contraindicated in those cases you have to give cyclosporin which works very well uh, very similar to that of steroid with a very rapid action and with that there is no effect on the blood sugar so try to remember these points because uh, sometimes you get a diabetic patient who is pregnant also and steroid becomes contraindicated in those cases we have other differential diagnosis uh, like we have inverse psoriasis which we have discussed we have erythrodermic psoriasis where the lesion involves the whole body and it is associated with fine scales now we also have some topical treatment modalities available to take care of psoriasis can you tell me chirag what are the topical drugs which can be used in a patient of psoriasis uh, ma'am, uh, some retinoids can be used and also there are uh, some regimens like Gokerman and Ingram regimen which uh, can be used. Very nice. Okay, so please remember topical steroid becomes the mainstay of treatment. So it's a very controversial statement that we are contraindicating oral steroid but we are considering topical steroid as the best treatment modality. Please remember in psoriasis for local application you prefer topical steroid. You can give topical retinoids like tazarotin. You give vitamin D3 analogs which is known as calcipotriol. And you can even give sorolin which is known as phototherapy. As very correctly said by Chirag, we have two type of regimen. One is Gokerman regimen and another is Ingram regimen. In Gokerman regimen, we are actually using coal tar along with the phototherapy. And in Ingram regimen, which we are actually using anthralin along with the phototherapy. So these are some of the old regimens we, we, which we used to prefer in the past. But because of a lot of irritant potential, a lot of foul smell which is present in these substance, we are not using it nowadays. We are only using the refined formulations or the drugs like topical steroids or topical tecrolimus or uh, topical te tezarotin which is the retinoid. And I want Chirag you to quickly summarize uh, about the clinical feature, the point in favor and what treatment you will get or keep this patient into? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, on the basis of thorough history and clinical uh, evaluation, I can summarize my case as uh, 55 years old male presenting with uh, silvery white scales all over the body, mostly over the extensor surfaces, and also uh, with no history of any joint involvement, uh, no history of any uh, drug allergy or any notorious drug intake is most likely a case of psoriasis. Uh, and uh, the differential diagnosis can include seborrheic dermatitis, uh, Ritter's disease and uh, eczema. Uh, seborrheic dermatitis can be ruled out because it uh, usually present as uh, uh, seborrheic lesions over flexural surfaces, uh, whereas psoriasis usually present uh, as lesions over extensors. And also uh, uh, Ritter's disease can be ruled out because there are no joint involvement and uh, 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 the other differentials can be some types of eczema uh, which, uh, which may have some predisposing factors which are not seen in this case. So we can uh, rule out these differential diagnoses based on the history and examination. Uh, if we have to investigate, then we can investigate the patient uh, with the help of uh, skin biopsy and uh, it will show the characteristic features of uh, parakeratosis, retention of nucleus in the stratum corneum, uh, Munro's microapsis, Kogoj pustules and uh, suprapapillary thinning and uh, uh, irregular and thickened retiriges, acanthosis, 
all these uh, hypogranulosis these can be features in the skin biopsy and ma'am uh, apart from uh, skin biopsy uh, uh, we can uh, do other general investigations uh, uh, which can uh, include cbc tlc uh, to rule out if the patient is having any immunosuppression uh, because the treatment regimen for psoriasis mostly uh, c consists of immunosuppressive agents uh, which usually most likely include uh, methotrexate, uh, cyclophosphamide and acetretin. Uh, steroids are uh, not used in psoriasis or contraindicated because uh, while tapering the steroids, uh, the patient can land up in severe form of psoriasis called as erythrodermic psoriasis or pustular psoriasis. Uh, one condition in psoriasis we use steroids is pregnancy and that uh, psoriasis of pregnancy is called as impetigo herpetiformis. Okay. So thank you and this was a very nice case presentation.